matplotlib if you want to like print out your graphs whatever graphical things that you want to like scatter plot a bar graph or histogram there are different kind of arithmetic packages like such as numpy so in the, in the same sense biopython is also a package that is not inbuilt in python you have to install it like externally but that is a pi package that was developed specifically for the people who are working in the field of bioinformatics because majority of you who are from bioinformatics field or biotechnology field you might be knowing that it becomes really difficult to explore all the data that you have on the website like from ncbi or from pdb or pubchem so that's why it, there has to be certain kind of codes which you can just learn two three lines of it and you can just download any kind of data that you want so python uh, uh you can find like uh, the application of python that you find is in like very different kind of thing, like machine learning that is uh, where you train your machine or teach your machine on certain set of data to predict or to give you the final result or expected result and totally based upon probability and statistics you can find the application in the graphical user interface uh, that is where wherever you want your user to be interactive with that of the machine like for example some certain apps or something like that um you have your web development if you want to develop your website you have your software development whether you want to build your software even in scientific research nowadays for uh, in like bioinformatics or any kind of genomics or transcript topics so because python find its usage in these all broad spectrum of uh, industries they were it is also termed as a general purpose language because everyone uses python and it's really easy for you guys to learn so those of you who have certain experience in coding it will be easy easy for you guys to like know the basics and then uh, focus on the application but for those guys who don't have any like basics of coding don't worry it will be really easy for you guys to understand how python works because it's it's, it's really simplistic kind of language that we use Right. now python was first introduced by guido von rossum who is the creator of python now every language that you see whether be c c++ java matlab they all have certain history which is associated with their title but python when um, uh, guido published python when he was asked for the name it wasn't like he was really interested in like python snake uh at that time there was a really good british uh, comedy uh, movie which was termed which was known as monty python's flying circus so he took the term python from there and later when the python language was commercialized he stuck with that name itself so that's how python name came into existence right now first of all uh, if you guys can briefly tell me like everyone has installed python and pycharm on their uh, local desktop yeah okay okay so uh, you guys uh, so first and the very basic thing or the very first program that you guys will learn in any kind of programming language be it python c++ any language is what we call as the hello world right so uh, we will basically looking at the how hello world or how these uh, programming functions like but we'll be looking at it from two points of view one is what is known as the interactive mode where we will be using the ideally uh, interpreter of python that is an inbuilt and second is when we use the pycharm uh, software right like. so what what happens in interactive thing is that initially what happened when python was released out people used to write scripts in different notepad and then they used to run this notepad in the python program so everything was going fine but the issue that they faced was so let's say if you are running a program and you encountered a particular error right so you have to go back to your uh, notepad where you have written the script and you have to find that line containing the error code you have to change it save it and then you have to again import the file in the python program to run it so it was becoming quite complex on the user side to you know simultaneously change the window from uh, script to python then python to script so there was a need to develop an integrated uh, interpreter whereby you can simultaneously run the code as well as you can like in real time you can see uh, whether th uh, there was certain kind of errors or how your programs were running right so that's how different kind of ides are there which you will see like notepads are there text pads are there word pad are there in the same way python ideally is also a kind of an interpreter uh, this is also known as integrated development and learning environment and we'll quickly see how uh, you can code in this particular uh, uh, ideally and the next thing that we will be focus uh, focusing our attention will be on pycharm so pycharm is another kind of an interpreter and pycharm recently has got a large amount of attention because Py pycharm um, is specifically built for like python languages whereby uh, whatever codes that you run 
PyCharm already has those kind of uh, packages pre-installed in itself, right? So while writing a particular code, you don't have to write it like totally or remember everything. PyCharm will give you an suggestion of uh, based upon what you are writing in the codes, right? So let's say if you're writing an import or you're writing uh, addition, or if you're writing certain kind of predefined uh, variables or functions that are inbuilt in Python, PyCharm will give you that suggestion. So you don't have to like remember everything and write it out, right? So I'll uh, quickly show you how uh, this thing uh, will happen. So just a second. So if everyone uh, can quickly open up their IDLE uh, from their command prompt. Yeah, so uh, if you guys can just open up your Python IDLE from like just uh, search it by search, search Python and it will show up your IDLE if you guys can open it. And whatever doubts you guys are having, just please uh, write it down in the comment box so that I can see it and like clear your query right now. So everyone has opened up your uh, IDLE. Yes. Okay. So. Uh, the basic programming uh, thing that we can do just to see are the arithmetic operations, right? To so you see, this is an inbuilt Python uh, ideally. What you can do is that you can access it in two ways. Either you can just go to your command prompt uh, and then you can just type Python and, and it will automatically take you to your Python interpreter. Otherwise, you can just access it anyhow, like from this way. And whatever you want, you can just add any kind of number and it will give you the result, right? For example, like if you add two plus three, it will give you five. Uh, if you like do any kind of subtraction, it will give you the result. If you like uh, multiply anything, it will give you the results, whatever are they, right? So this is a basic way you can access any kind of codes that you want. Now, there are two ways in which you can access this. One is you can use a notepad to write your codes, and then you can simultaneously import uh, your file in here with the .py extension. So I think everyone must be aware that Python file always ends in .py extension. So you guys can uh, like call those files here and then you can run it. But the issue that people started facing with this kind of interpreter was that let's see, let's say you have a large amount of data set that you want to import. And based on that data set, you want to create a graph, whether be it a histogram or whether be it a scatter plot, right? You won't be able to see those kind of graphs in this particular idea. So that was one major issue that people were facing here. So that's why they switched it over to a different kind of idea. Uh, that was uh, PyCharm. And another idea that is uh, like, just like PyCharm is what is called as the Jupyter Notebook. So, so okay, okay, sure. Just a sec. I'll just quickly switch over to PyCharm where uh, I can show you the this now. Are you guys able to see the screen? Let me just uh, increase the font size. Is it visible to everyone? Yes, it is. Okay. So, uh, as you saw in ideally, this that was one of the major issue that we were facing, right? So now uh, that's why we switched over to PyCharm, where like everything was already pre-installed and you were getting all the suggestions. And I was also talking about Jupyter Notebook. So Jupyter Notebook is another kind of an IDLE that basically uses different kind of a virtual environment, which is also known as Anaconda. And the basic advantage with Anaconda is that it 
already comes with a pre-installed Python latest version. So you don't have to actually install Python in your uh, local uh, system. Just you have to install Anaconda, you have to add it to your path and th that will be a real time uh, scenario that will be shown you. And it is much better to uh, print any kind of graph you say, or any kind of linear regression line that you want, right? So if you guys can just quickly open up your PyCharm and I'll tell you how you guys can uh, create a new project. So everyone has opened the PyCharm. Hello. Yes, we've opened it. Okay, so uh, you guys can quickly just create a project here, um, like name it according to yourself. Let's say I write it tutorial. And here you can see that uh, the project interpreter has certain kind of environment that you can use. So if, if you guys have already installed any kind of environment, so you can write an existing environment or you guys can uh, add a new environment here, right? So you guys uh, first have to understand that if you have Python installed, you have to give the interpreter as Python, right? So there are different kind of interpreters which are out there, but you guys have to give Python, whatever version you have, whether it be 3.7 or 3.8, you guys have to give the interpreter here. Or if you are doing it for the, for the very first time, just click on the new environment and uh, just uh, select the base interpreter from here and you guys can just create the project right so it will create a new project for you right then just go to this particular project that you have recently created right click here and then go to the new and in new just select this python file and whatever name that you can give to your first python file right whatever name is so let's say i give it first and then add a dot extension dot py. So it will create your first Python file here. That you PyCharm, you have to give PyCharm an interpreter. So PyCharm doesn't function like Anaconda. In Anaconda, Python is already installed. So it already knows what kind of interpreter it will use. But in PyCharm, you actually have to give an interpreter to PyCharm uh, to make it understand that, okay, when you will write a code, this is the interpreter that PyCharm will use and it will run your codes, right? So when you are going for the very first time, when you are creating your project for the very first time, you can just click here on new environment. And from here, you can just click on the base interpreter. Now, if you don't have anything here, so for example, you can see I have Anaconda also installed with me. So whatever kind of interpreter that I have installed on my laptop, it will show me all those four, possi uh, four possible combinations here. So if you guys are installing it for the very first time, it may be in someone's laptop that nothing will be shown here, right? So you can browse it from here and you can select file. So you might have installed it in your C drive in the name of Python and in Python folder, there will be, there will be a python.executable file. You can just click it and make it okay. And it will take it, it as a base interpreter when you're doing it for, for the very first time. Now, because I have already done it, so I'll just click on existing interpreter because I already have my interpreter as Python 3.7, right? And I'll just create it. Now, once you create it, it will ask whether you want to create a new project, like in new window, or whether you want to just overwrite in your current window. So I'll just uh, say, okay, I want to uh, do it in new window. So what it does is that in new window, it will import everything and it will calculate what kind of uh, modules you have. So here you can see in the bottom here, uh, it is discovering binary modules and it is importing uh, scanning files to indexes. So what it, this means here is that whatever module that you have pre-installed in your Python, it discovers all those modules and it will automatically import those things in PyCharm. Now in some of your laptops, it might take real really long. It depends upon your laptop, right? Someone might be facing this issue as well. And uh, it will also be another thing which is known as updating indices. So what updating indices means is that whatever the pre uh, like repository text files are there, PyCharm will like first go through all of those things and then it will install it, right? So what you can do is that you can just pause it here because sometimes what happens, it, it takes a long, large amount of time for you guys to like do all these background tasks and it will slow down your PyCharm, whatever codes that you are running. So you guys can pause it. Uh, whatever you guys like to do. So I will better suggest that you pause it here and then you just create any kind of your file, right? So let's say, uh, then how to create your first file, just click here on the project that you have created, whatever name you have given and right click here 
when you right click you'll get the very first command as new and in new you get a python file so just click on the python file and you can write any name that you want so for example i have already given it as first whatever name you write let's say i write abc and after writing the name just add a dot py extension just making sure that it's a python file even if you don't add a dot py extension it will automatically consider it as a python file but if you add a dot py extension it becomes a good habit like you know just don't like people won't be confused that whether i have added a python extension or not so it's better to just add a dot py extension to it and it, it just enter it and it will create your first file so so before going with like hello world uh, we can just write a command that is also called as print here and you can write it in double quotes or single quotes now i'll tell you in the like coming slides what is the basic difference between like a double quote a single quote and a triple quote just write print which is an inbuilt function of python which says that which understands that you have to uh, print something that user is asking me to print something and whatever is in there in the parentheses is the argument for print right and whatever you write in the double quotes or single quotes will be the one that will be taken as print now there's a difference here as well i'll uh, quickly uh, make you understand that as well so just first write print hello world let's say right hello world and just go to once you have written this just go here on the top there will be an option for run click on run and then again you will get an option saying run just run it now when you run it you'll get something like this a pop up will come out which says edit configurations so just click on edit configurations now why this uh, they are asking this is because when you uh, pycharm is already understood that you have given an interpreter like python 3.7 and whatever whatever the updated version that you have but once you are running the particular code they don't recognize it so python pycharm doesn't recognize that you have you are having a particular interpreter here as well so what you want to do is that you have to add it or you have to give this particular uh, file that is my first file here which is the first.py for that you have to give an interpreter so what you can guys do is once you click on edit configuration you will get something uh, of like this window you can just go here you can see a plus sign is here just click on the plus sign and whatever interpreter are there it will show you so just click on python it will accept the python whatever version you are having as the interpreter click on apply and select the run right so it will run it now what happens in some uh, cases is that because uh, in the background the indexing is working it will take some time for you guys to show whether this particular uh, function is running or not so a better way to run this particular program is also what you can guys do is just click anywhere in this particular console right click and you will get an option saying run file in python python console just click on this one and it will print hello world here it will automatically run the script in python console so has everyone run this particular first file uh, start something so this is the very first and basic programming uh, um, like pro python program that you you can run the next thing is to understand how arithmetic operations happen in python